Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It's time for the Go Collect speculation video. Stay tuned. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. The very first thing that we're going to do is to actually follow up on a poll that was posted to Twitter. And this was a poll in which the folks at Go Collect asked the question of which characters, which Spider-Man character you want to see in the upcoming Spider-Verse Part 2. And I'm going to tell you what you guys picked in just a moment, but I want to give a rundown of what this blogger talks about. And it's essentially what I just described. The blogger's like, hey, the Into the Spider-Verse sequel is coming. Who do you guys want to actually see in that movie? And, and he actually ran down a pretty awesome list of characters for people to consider. And the first one that was on the list was Lego Spider-Man, followed by the live action Spider-Man. And he highlights in this blog post that there is something compelling and something really cool about the possibility of seeing Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and also Tom Holland appear on the screen together. And while Sony has essentially poo-pooed this concept for the moment, it is not completely off the table. And so it could happen at some point down the line. The blogger goes on to present a few other Spider-Men that could potentially appear, including the superior Spider-Man, Doc Ock, when he took over Spider-Man's body, followed by the cosmic Spider-Man, and lastly, the Japanese Spider-Man. And I can tell you that I have two favorites that are on this list, and they include Superior Spider-Man. That story arc was amazing. And, and that is my pick. My first pick is that version of Spider-Man to appear, followed by the Spidey that had the cosmic powers. With that said, let me know down in the comments if you guys agree or disagree with that poll. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you like the idea of Superior Spider-Man or Cosmic Spidey coming to Into the Spider-Verse. So down in the comments, let us know what you guys think. While we are on this topic of Spider-Man, we have to acknowledge the elephant that is in the room. And the elephant is Miles Morales. Miles Morales is the hottest thing out there right now. And so this second blog post actually takes a look at some Miles Morales related books that you might want to pick up. And I'm not going to highlight all of them, but I am going to touch on a couple that the blogger talks about. And I'm doing this because I want to encourage you to click on the link down in the description and read the blog post for yourself. But with that said, let's talk about just a couple of the books that the blogger highlights. And we're gonna start it off with Spider-Man number one, the hip hop variant. A super cool cover. By all accounts, this cover is just fantastic and takes me right back to the 90s, to be honest with you. But Spider-Man number one, hip hop variant, is one of the books that the blogger talks about. He also highlights that you might wanna consider picking up Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse number one, specifically the one in 10 animation variant. The blogger points out here that there were about 30,000 copies of the main cover that were ordered, which means that because this is a one in 10 variant, there are fewer than 3,000 copies of this animation variant that are out there. And so this could be an attractive book for you to pick up. And then the very last book that I'm actually going to highlight is the Ultimate Comics 
all new Spider-Man number two, specifically the second and third printings of this book. And again, here there were some slightly lower print runs. And so these could be some books that you want to check out. I will offer you a little bit of a cautionary note. Miles Morales is hot. Miles Morales in many ways is Red Ocean. So before you drop your hard earned cash, make sure that you do your research. Make sure you think about how you're spending your money, where you're spending your money. Make sure that it makes sense for you. But again, this blog post highlights a couple of books that you might at least want to think about. The link down in the description. Martian the Manhunter is coming, so saith Scott Snyder. If you pay attention to all of the rumors that are out there, Martian the Manhunter is coming to the movies. Well, specifically, he's coming to the Snyder Cut that will be released on HBO Max next year. And according to, again, uh, Snyder, Martian the Manhunter was in his original uh, film, but was cut and now he's actually coming back and so the question is should you go out and buy some martian the man hunter comics the problem is that martian the man hunter has been around for a very long time and as a result of that his first appearance is actually pretty pricey that first appearance was in detective comics number 225 and and that book even at a 5.5 will set you back maybe five thousand dollars i mean that is a healthy amount of money but the blogger does a really good job of highlighting some other books that you might want to consider specifically if you believe that there is some value in speculating in Martian the Manhunter. And to that point, the blogger talks about a book that mentions his origin, that really focuses on the origin of Martian the Manhunter, that being Secret Wars number one. And they highlight that this book is actually available at an 8.5 right now on eBay for about 600 and $70. And they also highlight that Martian the Manhunter's first solo story in House of Mystery 143 is also a pretty good buy. In fact, you can actually find this book on eBay at a 7.5 for roughly $250. So again, if you believe that there is some magic to be made with Martian the Manhunter, you might want to take a look at some of these books. And if you do happen to pick up that first appearance, let me know because that is a pretty awesome book. The link to this blog post is down in the description. So I was at a comic shop earlier today and I actually bought the book that I'm about to talk about in just a second. And I bought it because I've been buying Venom since issue number one. So I, I buy it, I come home, I read the Go Collect blog post, and I realize that there's actually a first appearance in this book that I just picked up. And then I had the immediate regret that I didn't buy more copies. <laughs> but, but the book that we're talking about is Venom number 25. And we are specifically talking about a brand new villain that has been introduced by the name of Virus. And the question at hand is whether Virus will have the same type of popularity and also increase in value that we've seen with the first and early appearances of Null. And, and while we don't know the answer to that, uh, the blogger does a little, you know, he does a good job of kind of talking about the differences between these two characters and he, and he presents you with some questions around, do you make the investment in this new character? because there is an unknown future. And, and I'll be honest with you, I think that you do. And I think that you do it if you can buy these books for cover price. If you pay more than cover price, maybe there's a little risk there. But if you like Venom, if you've been reading it, a, a new character, first appearance is never a bad thing, especially, especially if you can get it for cover price. So a few moments ago, we talked about the Miles Morales hip hop variant, which I absolutely love, but do not own. And now I have the pleasure of talking about a long list of hip hop variants that I also don't own. This, this is not my week. 
<laughs> there are some weeks where I have a lot of the books that the bloggers talk about. And then there are weeks like this week where I don't really own any of them. I will tell you, however, that these hip hop variants are fantastic. If you have any interest in these hip hop variants, what they look like or in making an investment or speculating in them, you definitely want to take a look at this blog post because the blogger actually talks about several of these covers and, and what makes them special, uh, either the, because of the cover or because of what actually happens inside the issue. And again, the link to this one like all of the other blog posts, is down in the description. Now, with that said, I do want to touch on a couple of these hip-hop covers. Specifically, I want to talk about Champions Number 1. While I am not the greatest Champion fan, the blogger is a fan of the Champion, so I, I wanted to definitely acknowledge uh, this person's pick. Uh, the next one on the list is Totally Awesome Hulk, a title, a character that I absolutely love. I enjoyed reading this entire run featuring Amadeus Cho and while he goes uh, by a different name by the name of Braun right now I still think of him as the totally awesome Hulk and so the, the blogger talks about specifically totally awesome Hulk number one the blogger goes on to talk about several others. I only want to touch on a few more, that being Silk number one. I think that there is some magic to be made with some of these Spider-Man related characters. So Silk number one is one that I want to acknowledge. The same can be said for Spider-Gwen number one. I think that this character has a lot of potential along with Miles Morales to, to be something really major in the decades to come. And then the very last book that I want to talk about to that very point of the future is Invincible Iron Man number one, which is a book that is related to Riri Williams. So with that, I want to encourage you, if you have any interest in these hip hop variants, check out the blog post, the link down in the description. So this next blog post actually touches on something that I find fascinating. And what they touch on is original art. Now this is something that I have been looking at for quite some time. And to me, original artwork waters are very deep. <laughs> and to some degree, they are a little treacherous as well. One of the great things about comics is that you can buy a comic and you have pricing guides that will help you to evaluate the value of that comic. And you know whether you overpaid or whether you got a great deal. Unlike original art, there is no pricing guide. You have to triangulate the, the value and the price of that comic based upon what else is happening in the market and who that artist is and how well known that piece is and what is actually depicted. There is some complexity there that isn't necessarily the same as comics. But this blogger does a pretty good job of like talking about comic book art and original art and the rationale behind it. I would encourage you, if you have any interest in original art, to check out this blog post. And I am very hopeful that this blogger does more of this content because this was honestly something that was a little unexpected, right? I am I'm accustomed to doing these videos talking about comic speculation, but to get one on original art was a pleasant surprise. And so if you are the blogger that wrote this blog post, or if you are, you know, someone out there that has some expertise that wants to be a writer, or if you want to see more of this, let us know down in the description. Let us know what you think about this blog post and all of the others, right? So with that, I'm actually going to wrap this video up. We have reached the end of another fantastic week at Go Collect. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I want to encourage you to tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.